Look at this. What do we have here? We have a fish tank minus the fish. There's water inside of it. And what we're going to do today is we're going to have some fun and we're going to talk about things, whether they float or they sink. And we're going to, and you can see here, we have some bowling balls also, but I brought along some soda. So here we have a Pepsi and you can do this at home as well. It doesn't matter what you have. But we're going to try different things. I have a Pepsi, Dr. Pepper, I have a sparkling water, I've got a Diet Dr. Pepper, Diet Pepsi. You don't need a fish tank, right? Pepsi Zero. You don't need a fish tank. You can do this in your bathtub <laughs> or your kitchen sink <laughs> or in a bucket or in a kiddie pool. All right, here we go. And cream soda. We have all sorts of cans of soda. And what I want to do is I want to place one of these cans of soda into our water right here. All right. And so I also have a bottle of water. But we're going to start with, what should we start with? What do you think, Mrs. C? The Pepsi? Sure. All right, we're going to start with the Pepsi. It's a vanilla Pepsi. So I'm going to set this in here. and it sinks to the bottom. So we've got our Pepsi that sinks to the bottom. Uh, we also have a Dr. Pepper. Let's try the Dr. Pepper. Sinks to the bottom. And we've talked about this before, that if it sinks, we know that that object is likely more dense, right? All right, so then we have a couple of other drinks. We have this, oh, another sparkling water. It's a different shape. We'll talk about that in a second. We'll use all the cans that look the same. So I want you to make a prediction about what's going to happen on this one. Here we go. It floats. <laughs> it floats. What is that? It's a Diet Dr. Pepper. All right. So right now, you guys out there should be thinking... Guys and girls, you should be thinking, why is the Diet Dr. Pepper floating and the other two aren't? But let's let's add a couple of more cans just to make sure. Here's the Diet Pepsi. What do you think is going to happen? It floats. Huh. Pepsi Zero. It floats. Cream soda. A and W cream soda. What do you think is gonna happen? I'll give you a second to think about it. Make your prediction. Wow, that thing sunk like hardcore. It was just like a whoosh. Alright, check this out. So, do we have a pattern? Do we see something that's happening with our cans of soda pop? I don't have to ask, really. Do you guys call it soda? Do you guys call it pop? Or do you call it Coke? And so when I lived in Germany, we would go to the store and I would say, I want a large Coke. And then they would say, what kind? And I would say, Pepsi. So everything to me was a Coke. And then when I moved to Ohio, my wife and her family called everything pop, right? <laughs> so weird. I mean, but it is what it is. And then I have friends, and I call it soda a lot, too. Like, man, I want a soda. So let us know in the comments what you call your carbonated um, sugary drinks. All right, here we go. I've got sparkling water. I'm going to put this one in. I want to see what the sparkling water does. We're starting to get full. Oh, the sparkling water floats. It's a soda aquarium. It is a soda aquarium. It's beautiful, right? Look at all my fish. They're swimming around. They're just bouncing. All right, let's take some of these out and let's talk about it. So the question is, is why or what is going on? Let's just take, let's take a Pepsi and a Diet Pepsi, for example. What is going on? And I've got a towel over here. i got to grab it so I can dry these off. What's going on between these two things? Think about it for a second. One's Pepsi, one's a diet. 
And if we look at our ingredients on the back of these cans, there's a huge difference when it comes to the carbohydrates or the total sugars. Mrs. C, can we see, can you see the, the number on there? Yeah, I think so. All right, so here we have total sugars, 41 grams. Total sugars, zero grams. So, we've talked about density, right? And we know that water has a density of one gram per milliliter. And so that's kind of what we're using to compare everything to. These cans are 355 milliliters. 355 milliliters. They have the same volume. They take up, a, they take up the same amount of space. But because there is more of something in here, it gives it a heavier mass. So it, it essentially weighs more. There's more stuff inside of it. So we have a greater density inside of this can. And because of that, this can, when we put it in, wants to sink. This can wants to float. Now, what I also brought along is a little scale. And you might be wondering, how much sugar is 41 grams? And I was thinking about this also the other, the other night when we were prepping for this, and I thought, man, I really want to show them what that looks like. So I brought, I have these little sugar cubes. All right, I'm gonna turn on my scale. Oh, it says low. Are you, okay, I thought the battery was gonna die right here. On, all right, so I have one sugar cube. What's the question? Well, just somebody asked if all the cans do you think are made from the same material? Are all the cans made from the same material? I would assume yes, they're made from aluminum. Um, them being all aluminum cans. And maybe there's some variation because of the like how much ink is put onto the can, but I would say that they're very, very similar in that sense. That's a great question. All right, so we have, we said there were 41 grams of sugar in this. So here's one cube, that's two grams, about three almost, so it rounds up. So we're at five, seven, nine, 12, 14, 16, 19, 21, 23, 25, 33, 35, 37, this might bring us to, okay, 42, 42. Now, we can attribute some of this to like high fructose corn syrup and things like that, but in general, what I'm trying to show you is that there is a lot of substance in that can that's not in the other can. It's a lot, isn't it? That's a lot for each soda. That's a lot. And I want to look at something. The A&W, when it went down, it just... It was like kapunk. And it has 46 grams of sugars. Total sugar is 46 grams. So it has even more than this. So it's more dense than the Pepsi was. Which makes sense because when I put it in, you could just see that when it went in, it was just like, it just sank even faster. Not by much, but it just feels, it really does feel heavier than the other cans of soda. All right. So density. Density. I'm going to take some of these out. Dry them back off. You know what you can also do while you're setting this up? You can actually put different things into your bucket of water or your bathtub or your sink. Maybe you have some grapes. We tried grapes the other day when we used our carbonated water versus regular water when we were exploring water. Uh, what about if you have an avocado? What would it do in the water? We had one, but it rotted. I don't want to put it in because it looks weird. <laughs> it's gross. It got yucky. It's got yucky. <laughs> but now we can grow an avocado. But now we can try to grow an avocado plant. Did anybody else notice anything else about the water level? I don't know if anyone was paying attention to this, and I've already pulled them out, but I marked the water level when it was empty with the green line right here on the side and a little white dash, just so I could have a starting point, a reference point. And when all the cans were in there, the water level increased. 
because all of the cans were displacing that amount of water. And really quick, let's see here. How many cans did we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Is that all I had in there? Yeah, seven. And each one is 355 milliliters. So seven times 300 is 2100. Seven times 50 is 350, so that's 2450. Seven times five is 35, so 2485. If I did my math right, we had 2,485 milliliters of displaced water. So when we put in, put that in, it displaced this almost two and a half liters. That's awesome. That's so cool. See, throw a little math in there with it. If I, I hope I did my math right. If I didn't do my math right, please let me know. I was doing some mental math. Kudos to my teachers who taught me how to do that. And kudos to all the teachers who are watching who teach kids how to do that. All right. So, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking to yourself, self, what is he going to do with those bowling balls? I think we should put a bowling ball into the water and see what happens. All right. Ugh. Here's a bowling ball that our local bowling alley provided me. Beaver View Bowling, thank you so much. I've had this for quite some time. I've always wanted to do this experiment, and they were so generous to provide these to me way back yonder when I was a wee little scientist. Um, but so I have this bowling ball. It doesn't have a weight on it, but if I remember correctly, it's 14 pounds. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the bowling ball into our fish tank. And I have to put it in carefully because I'm not sure what it's going to do. And I don't want it to hit the glass and shatter the glass because that would be the end of our show together today. Oh my gosh, it really is heavy. All right, I'm going to put it right in the middle. I want you to watch the water line also. All right, so it sinks. It definitely sank. It's sitting on the bottom. A little bit of it's hanging out of the top. I lost a little bit of water as we were pouring things out and cleaning them off. But it's definitely sitting. All right, we're going to try something. So this little line, I'm going to add a line. I forgot to add the line with the soda. So that... That's the difference. That's how much water that bowling ball has displaced. All right, so it went into the water and it pushed the water away from it because it's sitting in the tub. It's like when you sit in the tub, the water level might be just about, it may say eight inches high and you sit in and all of a sudden it's like, whoop, it goes up. It's because you're moving the water around you. The water is pushing on you, but you're also pushing back on the water. So that bowling ball sank, right? We can all agree to that. I'm gonna take this one out. I had to stand up because I don't want it to slip out and fall. Set this back here. I know we're pouring, we're bringing a little bit of the water out with it. All right, so we have this one also. All right, this has a number on the side, 10 pounds. This one was 10 pounds, all right? So we have a 10 pound bowling ball here. Bowling balls, I believe, I didn't do research on this, but I believe they're all the same size. I think that's like a standard thing. Other than like the little ones for like little kids. Or Mr. C. When I was a kid, we used to bowl with the little ones, like the handheld ones, and whew, oh, so cool. Anyway, that's when I lived in Massachusetts. So, I've got this bowling ball. It's 10 pounds. This one was 14 pounds. Let's put this in. Let's see what happens. Should be thinking, making a prediction. See if anything's going to happen. Here we go. Watch the water line also. It floats. It floats. All right. Is anybody else like, whoa? I know I am. <laughs> that is so cool. It's the same size as this bowling ball, but it's not sinking. So you should be sinking. Why? 10 pounds, 14 pounds. So they have a different mass. Someone asked about the color. Why is one aqua? So why is one aqua? It's, it's the acrylic or the material that they made this with. Um, and they just colored it. So I, I don't know if that would have an impact. But what we can conclude is that this one has more stuff in it. 
and that's why it's heavier. So they've put more stuff in this to give it more mass, more weight. And because of that, it has a higher density. There's more stuff in the same amount, just like our cans. There's more stuff in the regular soda than there is in the diet soda, okay? And we can attribute that to the materials. Now, what's interesting, I'm glad I marked it. What's interesting is right here, I know we have a lot of green lines. It doesn't necessarily help. This might be a little confusing, but right here, it didn't displace as much water. And my question is, does that make sense? Because I want you to think about this for a second. If I bring this over here right to the center, look how much of the bowling ball is above the water still. It's almost like an iceberg, like in the ocean. There's a huge, massive part underneath in the water. And then up here, you have this piece that's showing. But what's cool is I can take this and I can push it down because we know that they're the same size. I should be able to push this all the way down and touch the glass and still have a little bit of a dry spot. So we're going to try that. It's about the same. And look at our water line. Our water line comes up almost identical. All right, we've pulled a little water out and there's probably some water inside of this. So our experiment might be a little off, but the water line comes right back up to where it was next to the one that sank. So we can say that they have the same volume. They're displacing the same amount of water, but because this one has less stuff in it, it does this when I let go of it and it, and it floats. <laughs> That's so cool. We're getting some ideas of things to use. Uh-oh, of course we're getting ideas of things to use. I'm gonna put them both in so we can just see and compare. Watch the water, watch the water. Whoa. All right, I think it's mesmerizing to see something that size floating. And when you stop and think about it, we might do a lesson on this down the road a little bit. We're starting to talk about this upward force that water provides objects. And it's the same idea that I can take a quarter and put it into the water and it falls down because it's more dense. But then you have these huge, massive battleships and cruise ships that are made of hundreds of thousands of pounds a steel and they can float. That's a whole nother lesson because we get into buoyancy and why things are able to float. But we're going to do some of that because we have, I have a great engineering design challenge for you guys to go along with that. But we have some ideas to put in, into the water. Is that what you said, Mrs. C? Yeah, somebody suggested an Oreo. And or do we have Oreos? I don't think we have Oreos. I think Oreos. I ate all the Oreos. Today's our grocery day. Yeah, today we're picking up groceries. And I think Oreos are on the list. <sighs> Let's see. Although I hate to mess up the water. Mess up an Oreo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the Oreos. What else do we have? We got some chocolate. We can try some. Well, Oreo, I, I understand why they wanted an Oreo, I think. So I don't have an Oreo, but for those of you who are watching and listening, do you think an Oreo would float or sink? All right, I'm going to go to the cupboard really quick. I, I want to, I don't want to end. Someone said, where's Jonathan with the ketchup? <laughs> where's the ketchup bottle? Oh, here's water. Here's water. I don't know how many milliliters. This is a 20 ounce, so it's a little bit more water than this, but I'll put this in. Make your prediction. What do you think it's going to do? What do you think it's going to do? Floats. Couple. Think about why it's floating. What's inside of the bottle? Water. So the water inside has the same density as the water outside, so it's gonna just float around. There's a little bit of air inside of that bottle. And then I have this um, sparkling water. It's a different shape, but it has the same volume. It has 355 milliliters, just like this sparkling water had 355 milliliters. Let's see what this water does. Just compare them one more time. Throwing grapes. All right, we've got grapes, some candy, oh, an apple, an apple. I'm not gonna throw this one. Yeah, don't throw that one. And if you're gonna join us tomorrow, we're gonna be doing Mr. C's favorite egg experiments. Believe me, you do not wanna spare anytime tomorrow. You wanna join us. 
All right, here we go. Apple. Let's get these bottles out. These cans out. Just do different things. I know, I know. I know what you're thinking. We don't have any candy bars, though, do we? Not really, no. No. We got rid of all of our Halloween candy. I wish we would have kept it. it was... Got rid of. Well, we got rid of it. AKA. We ate it. Not all of it. There was just too much. All right, here we go. Apple. An apple a day. Keeps the doctor away. Apple floats. Nice. I didn't think about I didn't realize we had any apples left. All right, so the apple floats. Oh, maybe that's where they get the idea for bobbing for apples. Like, you go in and try to catch it, which I always thought was really gross that people were trying to bite into an apple someone else tried to bite into. All right, here we go. We've got some grapes. If they were washed, I'd eat them, but they're not. They will be. <laughs> they will be. I'm not not after being in this water. All right, we've got the grapes fall to the bottom. And we saw this the other day when we were doing our water experiments when we put it into the water bottle. All right. So we've got our grapes. Let's see here. I've got a piece of chocolate. Should I just leave it wrapped? No. Nah. Nah, unwrap it. It's, what is this, Dove Dark Chocolate. It's Dove Dark Chocolate. That's the reason we're using this chocolate. Mr. C doesn't like dark chocolate. <laughs> That's not nice. Oh, I was hoping it would float. And then I've got this a piece of aluminum. I'm just going to sprinkle it up. The aluminum floats. Okay, so it's not as dense. All right, we've got a Lifesaver mint. Oh, nothing's fl nothing is floating. We need more candy bars. Thanks for the idea, people. We definitely need more candy bars. All right. Yeah, they said you need candy. We need more candy. He said maybe a book, but I don't know. We don't want to put a, a book. <laughs> it's a good idea, but what's the one? Uh, Fifty thousand leagues under the sea. Did I say that right? I don't know if I said that right. All right, candy cane. Nothing. All right, now we've got an egg. This is the one that I'm most interested about. Let's see what it does. Oh, it sank also. Everything's yeah, sinking. It's kind of sitting up. I think because our eggs are a little bit on the old side. Yeah, our eggs are. Those are old ones, aren't they? Yeah, they're getting older. Yeah, so this, that's what I've always been told that old eggs float. Yeah, old. That's a. That is a way you can test your eggs. But is um, that true? I think so because as the egg gets bad. The inside of it, it's you have air. bacteria starting to do its thing, and it's starting to produce gases, and then it causes it to float. Ta-da! Look at that. That's beautiful. That is the way to end a day learning together. 